Hello, thank you for coming to this uh, Agora talk. And uh, although it was not in the initial uh, program of the Agora, we had the talk with uh, Venia a week ago about this extremely important issue. And uh, we decided to add this talk to our lineup. It's about uh, filmmakers from Ukraine and uh, a great platform that uh, is created by Crew United, a company based in Germany. And uh, Venya Vergu is the Greek representative. So it's our great pleasure to welcome you. And we have to hear you. <laughs> Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, thank you very much for being here and thank you Agora for uh, having me here today. It is really important for us to present this platform um, which is called Filmmakers for Ukraine and I will explain what it is about. Before I start talking about this, I want to say a few words about Crew United. Um, basically, Crew United is a film network um, that has been operating in Germany for the last 26 years. And you can see in the big screen over there, this is how it looks like. And it's been developed for all those years where uh, the entire in film industry of Germany is registered over there um, with members that have to pay an annual symbolic fee. And um, over the last couple of years, uh, Crew United expanded in Poland and in France. And pretty soon it's going to expand also in other five countries, uh, Lithuania, Romania, Italy, Spain, and Greece. So I will be the representative for Greece. Um, it will take a while before we are ready to present that. The idea is that people are registered in this platform to present themselves, to present their skills, and they can also find jobs, they can uh, network, they can communicate the projects they're working for because apart from film professionals, crew members and cast and actors, um, as you can see, um, the team behind Crew United is also registering every single audiovisual work that is shot in the country. So uh, right now there are people working for Germany, Poland and France and Within the la next few months, the teams of the other five countries that I mentioned will start working for this. So I wanted to start with this intro because I wanted you to understand um, how this team works and uh, the, the spirit behind this team is to connect people in order to make great films, as you can see on the website. So the moment that the war in Ukraine started, uh, from the very first day, the team behind Crew United started to talk about uh, what could be done from our uh, perspective, from our side, in order to be able to help the filmmakers in Ukraine. Because they had to experience all these extreme situations. So we've been working um, from the very first day and the outcome of the brainstorming was this platform. We call it filmmakers for Ukraine because the idea is as you can see that this is a place where we feed this platform with any kind of information in all European countries that can help filmmakers from Ukraine either because they leave their country and they need to find um, a new life in a new country or because they stay back to fight and they need help. So um, we have an amazing team of volunteers, people that are working with us from uh, organizations primarily in Germany, but also from Poland. And you can see, I will show you, for example, and you will see here the associations and the organizations that are uh, standing behind this initiative from the very first day, like Directors Guild of Poland, um, Polish Film Academy, Polish Producers Alliance, Polish Women in Film Association, Producers Guild of Poland, and so forth. You already know that Poland being a country next to Ukraine has been an amazing 
country in terms of helping people coming in their own territory. So um, the response by the Polish um, film professional has been amazing. So the idea was that we wanted to find a way to provide information for filmmakers who need help as fast as possible. And um, we started brainstorming and we decided that it would be ideal to provide different types of help, uh, primarily for filmmakers and their families, but also for marginalized people like LGBTQ and um, Roma and children and um, people in need like elderly or sick people. So when you go to the section find help, give help, you can see different filters with many different types of help, um, a list of countries where you can find information for them. The types of help that we present here have to do with um, obviously accommodation, they have to do with job offers, they have to do with um, refugees and how they need to find ways of entering different countries in Europe. Um, it can be um, a, a whole section of donations and you can see here we have a different one. So in this section you will find, now ideally in the find help, give help section, this is what you would get. So when you go to each territory, you see what is provided. For example, here in Greece, so far we have these entries and people who are coming here can see where they can donate people to help Ukrainians. You go to each entry, you find information and you go directly to the original source of information. Um, so find help, give help, donate are the places where people find information according to the countries that are going to live for the time being. We have two more sections, um, movies, as you can see here. And the idea here is that because a lot of people working for Crew United have been in their past careers amazing journalists and film critics, um, we decided that it's important for people to learn more about Ukraine and about their film industry and their history. So we have presented here a list of films made in Ukraine or about Ukraine. And you can see the different types of films here, um, like documentary, fiction, shorts, uh, TV series. And you cannot watch, obviously, the films here. But once you go to each film, you have a synopsis, you have the main um, basic information about the film and you get the trailer and you have sources of where it's possible to view the film if it is available or uh, you have information about the sales agent, uh, the streaming platform that might be uh, presenting it, like for example you might all have heard about this amazing documentary which is available on a big streaming platform right now. Um, Winter on Fire. So once you're here in, in this film, you see where it is available, in which platforms, so you can see it. We tried our best to include information about the films that Thessaloniki Documentary Festival included um, in their program, like uh, Trenches, you see it here. So this is an information of where this film is available right now, in which festival it's playing, and um, in which platform it is available, if it is any. So that people can have access to films which are trying to explain the complex identity of this country and the historical circumstances that brought this country into this situation today. There is another section here, um, as you can see, which is called blog. And here we want to present 
as you see, any type of information about special events, festivals, campaigns, and appeals by the film industry. We feed this every day, like the entire platform, obviously. So, for example, here you see uh, how Hungarian animators are um, expressing their um, opposition to the war. And you can see a short film here provided. Or you can find um, other entries, like, for example, this one. This is the Ukrainian Film Festival in Poland. This is a festival that takes place in Warsaw every fall, and they travel in other Polish cities to present their films. So they tell us here which Ukrainian films they are showcasing now. And, of course, in most of the initiatives like this one, it goes without saying that all money, everything that comes from the screen fees goes directly to Ukraine, goes directly to the Ukrainian filmmakers who have stayed back in the country and they need money to survive or to find materials to fight. Most of them have decided to stay to fight with their talent, meaning they want to document the war. And that's why we receive a lot of appeals and a lot of calls from UK Ukrainian filmmakers who need equipment like vests, walkie-talkies, uh, editing software, anything that could be valuable to them to do their work. Um, other information that can be found here is, for example, this initiative, which is amazing. Um, the Universal Reading Foundation in Poland had this amazing idea to approach Ukrainian publishers and ask them to provide them with the files of Ukrainian children's books so that the Polish publishers would publish them in Poland to provide these books to children entering their country in the borders because they know how important it is for children experiencing such extreme situations like living in their home country, traveling across the borders that and what huge burden carries every mother that accompanies a minor. Um, they thought that this would be a nice idea to help them um, overcome this difficult hardship. And what is very touching in this initiative is, as you can see here, um, Mrs. Maria Descour, which is the president of the foundation and a writer herself from Poland, she says that reading books is all about democracy and innovation and economics and science. They wanted to reduce the gap that will be created in the publishing world of Ukraine so that they do not start from zero afterwards. And they speak out of experience because there's been some research and readership in Poland had been very low over the last recent decades. And the reason was because their um, publishing was destroyed from Second World War. So they know for experience how an extreme experience like a war can affect uh, readership, and that's why they had been so proactive with having this idea. For example, I found out this on a Greek newspaper, Kathimerini, yeah? They had this information. So anything, anything that anybody can think of that can be of any help, it is very useful for us to know because we spread the word and we are all very connected in all these countries and we're trying to engage as many associations and unions and organizations and institutions as possible because the more people think, the more good ideas can come out. And um, another um, little piece of information, for example, you might have already heard about this because it's been on social media from the very first days of the war. I would like to find it before I explain it. It's loading, so it takes a while um, before it takes us to the other. There's a post about the Saloniki, of course, and the films presented here. Yeah. It didn't take me to the other page. Yeah, here it is. 
So you all know Russian arm, right? Russian arm is a flagship equipment in the movie world. It's a filming equipment which has been very, very, very um, popular. And up until now, it was called Russian Arm. So very recently, the company that Max manufactures it, the company called Filmotechnic Remote Systems, decided to rename this equipment and they call it Ukraine, out of respect to the Ukrainians, uh, engineers who were the ones that actually built this. So even symbolic gestures like this um, have a very important impact and people can understand the cause behind it. So um, this is a platform that is constantly, oh here it is, find and help. You can see here now all these types of help, accommodation, assistance for refugees, equipment, food, how to help guys, guides, job work. You see here there's 62 entries. Now this is extremely important for Crew United because that's what Crew United does. That's the idea behind Crew United, to connect people, to be able to find each other, to collaborate, to make films. So for the Ukrainians, because there are so many fleeing the country, we receive dozens of emails every day by Ukrainian filmmakers who say, I've arrived to Romania, I've arrived to Poland or Germany, and I'm looking for a job. So in the majority of these cases, um, because we decided that we want to follow the etiquette of, and the, the way that Crew United works, um, we ask them to be, become a member of the Crew United platform. And of course they have to provide some uh, CV and evidence of their work because we, we need to know that they are professionals. And for example, here is one of these cases. This is a lady who is a costume designer and she's actually in Greece, she's in Athens. So she's looking for a job here. So obviously this is an open call to anybody here who might be of help to her. So we have many, many, many requests like this. People who have left their country and they have arrived to another one and they are looking for a job. So we try to give them this option and um, hopefully we believe that they will have some calls by professionals in their new country with some job offers. It's without saying, uh, I'm sure you can imagine how uh, difficult it is when we read emails saying, save my life, help me save my family and help me find a job. So this is very, very important for us. And um, the idea is that we manage to find as many possible sources of information in each country as we can in every different aspect of all this. And um, I would like to tell you, for example, some numbers so far, because um, we knew that this could be of help, but figures speak louder than our thoughts, so figures gives us the result of this. And so far, um, in, the first, in the last seven days, we had over 13,300 individual visitors to the platform. We had over 612,236 page requests, hits to each page, and you can imagine what that means. And I will give you some figures of the traffic we had by different countries, because we can see, as you know, uh, who is visiting the platform by which country. So the top five countries so far are Germany, and we had 290,551 visitors from Germany so far. From Ukraine, obviously, 85,173. Poland is the country in the third position with 22,563. Um, visits so far. Greece is the fourth country and we're very, very happy about that. It means that people from Greece are interested to know what is happening here and how they can help. We had 21,000 hits so far. And France is the fifth country with 16,000 
602 hits in the first seven days. So um, this gives you an idea. Um, Crew United has over 40,000 members so far in the countries that uh, they operate. So, so far we had over 40 people from Ukraine and Poland and Germany who registered and became members to Crew United in order to be able to find jobs. So that's uh, the idea behind it. The idea is that we want to engage as many people as possible and I'm very, very happy that uh, Hellas Dog is here today, the Association of Greek Documentary, right? And um, we had a talk earlier and I know you have your time for an intervention that you wanted to speak about, right? You have a letter that you would like to read and you would like to share uh, your views about this case. Uh, we were, uh, Elas Doc, the Greek Documentary Association. Marcos Gastin, eh? I'm Marcos Gastin, a member of the association. <coughs> Thank you. And um, we were very moved and uh, uh, impatient to make something about Ukraine from the very, very beginning. And we, I will read the letter from, uh, it was a kind of uh, letter we want a filmmaker in, filmmakers in Greece to sign. Uh, and it says that we, Greek filmmakers, producers, directors, and creators of cinema and documentary film, first demand the immediate cessation of the military invasion of Ukraine, as well as an unconditional departure of our Russian troops. Two, believe that this Russian invasion violates every fundamental principle of international law, human rights, freedom, and democracy. It doesn't only threaten Ukraine, but also world peace. Three, stand in solidarity with our Ukrainian colleagues and every citizen whose life and freedom are under threat while their country is being savagely destroyed. Four, stand in solidarity with our Russian and Belarusian colleagues, as well as all who bravely express their opposition to this war defying arrest, censorship, and new found legislation, so-called legislation, that could incur 15 years of prison. Five, implore the Greek government, social organizations, institutions, and ordinary citizens to effectively support humanitarian aid towards Ukraine and its citizens. From the, okay, any, anyone want to sign this? I would add that, uh, from the first moment, we were uh, in uh, relation with uh, DAE, the Documentary Association of Europe, which we are part of uh, in Greece. And um, we give money as an association to a uh, big amount of money for us because we are poor and 500 euros we start from the association. We ask our members and uh, all the filmmakers and uh, even uh, audience of documentary film to give money, we gave two or three uh, address. One is one you mentioned, it's to help documentary filmmakers there to, docu to make war in their way, means uh, either with weapon, either with a camera, to document this war and uh, fight the, all the, the lies uh, from the Russian part. And, and I would add that uh, personally in my name, my personal name because I was very sensitive to this uh, issue because uh, my best friend who died recently was uh, Ukrainian, Russian Ukrainian, and I've been with him uh, to prepare a film in uh, Ukraine, in Kiev, some 20 years ago. So when I saw the building with a hole inside, it could be a building I've lived for one month there. and. Uh, I would like very much the Greek community of filmmakers to be more active and more effective about this issue. This initiative is very good because it's very practical. We are uh, people uh, who don't have only dreams, but we try to realize our dreams 
Now we have to realize this world solidarity in practice. But we can have a position. We can say loud our position. And I would like to criticize very strongly the attitude of the Greek Academy of Film, of film who had a position which is a shame for my... I'm speaking my own name, okay? That to say, we are for peace and we want in solidarity to encourage you to see two Ukrainian films that are on, in theater in Athens. No, it's not enough. We have to make a position, like a, have a position like all the academy uh, in the world, especially in Europe, against the war, to support practically the, our colleagues and the people of Ukraine and to come down with the most loud voice this aggression from uh, the Russian government. Thank you. Um, I couldn't agree more and I just wanted to add that, um, you know, when something like this happens, um, everybody gets distressed and everybody is, it's easy for everybody to say we are against the war, but it's difficult to find actual actions that can help people's lives and um, that's why the idea behind this initiative by Crew United engages many, many people because the more you think, as I said before, the more you can find good ideas that can have an actual effect and impact in a person's life. And um, as I said before, the numbers speak because people from Ukraine come in here, they find real help. And for example, it is important that organizations like Hellas Doc is expressing their opposition as you do and uh, would be very happy to have you as supporters in this initiative. If, if you think of any other way that could be practical, for example, to pass the word to your members and whoever is shooting or prepares for shooting and they, and they would be willing to work with the Ukrainian people who have come in Greece, that would be amazing. Or if any of you and any of your members can find any piece and source of information that can be useful to provide us with that. You can write, obviously, to um, the email, which is Filmmakers for You. I will show you here. It's on our webpage. It's mail at filmmakersforukraine.com. So anything, any idea that comes to mind, uh, you can email here, either connecting us with any organization who is willing to help and support either sharing an idea or information about a person, that would be of, of great help. And um, I don't know if there are questions that you would like to ask at this point. Until you decide. Sorry, Nora, we have to speak in English. In Yes, we know that, and it's already here. There's, uh, yeah, and many people are doing it from abroad. You might have heard about it. People are using Airbnb to rent places in Ukraine, obviously without going, just because by paying, this is what you're talking about, right? Just because, just by paying the um, owner of the property, they help him survive, basically. So that's a tiny idea that saves lives. So. Anything like this that you hear about and you don't find it here because we have as editors because we are many we have tra we have found our we have found our own way of working and we work with a huge document that we feed with information we double check whether some other editor has put it in and so forth so it might be already in it might not so if you don't find something in here already and it is useful please communicate it to us. I'm here to exchange emails if you want. And of course, mail at filmmakersforukraine.com for as long as it takes and uh, it needs. After Marco's speech, I just wanted to say that, for example, um, the Federation of European Directors, FERA, um, has 
created this press review. Basically, they collect here every single piece of information by direct by guilds, associations, unions, and how they have expressed their opposition. So you could find ways, and we could also find ways together if you would like to spread the word and make people hear about her last dog. And you, you could find other ideas with other associations to work together for a more practical idea. Yes, a question, Romana. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for this initiative and talking to us. I'm Romana Lobach, I'm from Ukraine. I'm a, a, an actress and a producer. And I think I, I want actually to thank very much the uh, Greek Documentary Association for the positioning. And I think it's very important from every organization, institution, to take a position against the world. There is no but. We have all to take a positions and actions and not only some actions that we see through social media. We really need to, to search and to be educated. And most of all, we have to have a position about it. If we don't have a clear position, we, we are just helping this thing to, to get growth. Uh, thank you so much. I think... Um Agilos said earlier, on your way here, there were Ukrainian people in Aristotelus Square uh, having um, a demonstration, thank you, um, a few minutes ago. So, um, yeah, going out to the streets and expressing our position is something that, of course, we have to do, um, even though it distracts our daily life. But I think that most of us, and I know that filmmakers are very sensitive creatures, most of us do not sleep that easily these days at night. So um, we try our best to help. And as I said before, if you find any ideas that can be helpful, please reach us and communicate them to us. They will be very, very valuable. And spread the word to other organizations as well, like you know the Greek Film Center, ECOME and um, Hellenic Film Academy. There are so many, the unions of the producers. Um, I've reached out to them. Sorry? Exactly. Wait, for the, for the mic, Romana. I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I speak too much now. <laughs> but we really, we really need to be loud. And like, we really need to take positions. Apoe took its position. Hellenic uh, uh, Documentary Association took a position. I mean, we all have to take a position. If you don't take a position, we know that you're, you're, you're not participating in this, in helping. I mean, this is essential to spread the right information. This is crucial in this moment. It's the third week of war. We cannot stay silent. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, thank you very much for your time. And thanks again, Thessaloniki Documentary Film Festival and Yana Sari for being so welcoming, as always. And it's been important for us to have a venue to speak about this. Thank you all.